Hello everyone and welcome to Don't Be Bored. Today I'm going through another top five list and while well, there's plenty others on the channel, go and check out the playlist. Today we are talking about games which vanished after release. Now these aren't necessarily in any order and I'll give an honourable mention one as well, but these are games which, well, some people have them in their collection and do talk about them a lot, but there's very few people which seem to actually own or play the game anymore, despite them getting a lot of buzz when they initially released. So let's jump into the list. The honourable mention for the list has to go to Wavelengths. Now this is a game which when it came out there was a big hit about it it kind of just sort of petered out relatively quickly, although every now and again it does seem to get mentioned and brought up sort of by content creators or just sort of on Reddit or whatever. If you don't know what Wavelength is, it's a team-based party game where one person of a team is trying to hint something to their team better than to their opponents. So let's say the spectrum of this Wavelength is hot and cold. So very hot, kind of hot, in the middle, kind of cold, cold. That's where you'd sort of estimate them and they'll be somewhere on this sort of spectrum that you need to hint towards your team. So let's say it's right over here towards hot. Well, maybe you say to your team, the apple pie at McDonald's. They think, oh, that is nuclear hot. So they put it all the way that way. The opponent, and the opposing team then sort of goes, I think they've gone too far, not enough or whatever. And then you reveal to see whether you're right or wrong. And if your team is close, you're getting loads of points. If they're kind of close, you're getting like one step on this track. Then you move over and the other team's doing it. But it's all about those cards that give you the left and right. So sometimes, yes, it's hot and cold, but there's many more sort of funny examples that sort of leave you scratching your head going, where on this spectrum can I say that in the middle is? So there's some, some great things. It's a fun one. I'm glad I've got it in the collection. But I don't know necessarily how long it will stay in the collection for, but it does come out now and again. But like I said, this game has sort of vanished it's just not really talked about much anymore. Number five is a game that's basically in the Azul line-ish, and that is Reef. Reef is a game where you are creating a very vibrant and colourful reef. It's even had a second edition, which from the looks of things sorted out maybe some of the colours that were used, but still it's a bright, vibrant, coral reef that you are building with these chunky plastic pieces that stack up. You're scoring based on maybe a pattern in there or how high a blue bit of coral is, but every time you're playing one of these cards it's got some blocks that you need to add and then a scoring thing. But those never match up, so maybe it's like, right, you can place two red bits of coral, but then you're scoring for every green bit that's on show. And you're like, oh, I've got to add those bits first, so I don't want to hide my greens up. And you're playing these cards to try and combo them nicely. This turn I'm playing reds and scoring for something. Next round, maybe I'm scoring for the reds are just placed. It's quite a fun sort of dual layer that you're doing. It's just not necessarily one that's easy to go, that's what I want to play. It's a solid game. And like I said, it even had a second release, but I feel like after the first release, the second edition didn't get any buzz, and it just sort of pitted out. But it's still a really solid game, and that's Reef. Number four is a word game that I can actually recommend, which is quite unusual for me, and that's Letter Jam. When this came out from CEG, it was kind of a big thing. Effectively, someone's created a word for you on these cards, and one at a time you're going to be trying to guess what that letter is by deduction. Because you have one face card facing away from you with a letter on it. The way that deduction works is that someone's going to say that they can create a word from what they can see and you're left sat there going, I can see everything but my card. 
and you're slowly trying to work out what letters it could or couldn't be. Once you've guessed that one, you put it down and you move on to the next one in the next round and you're slowly trying to work out what your letters are by that deduction. It's just an interesting twist and unlike other games where it's really important to know big long words, actually in Letter Jam some of the short words are really helpful for you to work something out, work out what your letter is. And that's unusual in word games. You don't need the longest words. You don't need the biggest, you know, dictionary in your head. You just need to know most words or a good chunk of easier to know words, which is good for me. And it just sort of works nicely as you're deducing your letters. I don't know why it didn't necessarily um, hit the ground running. I think it hit the ground walking, seemed to have a bit of buzz to it but it's just not talked about. Maybe it's because it's a word game, letter-based word game, and those aren't, you know, the coolest thing. But Letter Jam is still good fun. Number three is probably the most recent game on the list, and that is Wormholes from AEG. I actually did a review for this game on the channel. AEG was very nice to send me this game. I really enjoyed it. It's a pick-up-and-deliver game that makes the elements and mechanics of this game make sense. Basically you can drop wormholes across this board so while you might need to go and drop this thing off of that planet you don't need to trudge all the way through space just trudge up here and use that very nicely placed wormhole to get all the way to the other side of the map. There's like no other pick up and deliver game that has that zippiness that quick jumping across the map movement that really works. It never really seemed to get the buzz that this deserves and pick up and deliver is quite an underused sort of mechanic. I often think that it's in big games that take a long time and Wormholes didn't. I'm just surprised I think that a game that I've certainly enjoyed would say it's a solid game and if you enjoy pick up and deliver even slightly it's worth playing and it just didn't really get out there. I don't know if that's because of maybe a lack of marketing to some extent from AEG. Maybe it just released at the wrong point. But I'm surprised that it fell a bit flat where the wormholes, it could have zoomed sort of into people's collections. Definitely I'd recommend going out and watching my full review if you want to know more on it because it was a really fun game. That's Wormholes. My number two is a game that I think sells pretty well on the second home market and that is The Godfather Colleone's Empire. It's a Simon game with area control where you're trying to in some cases shake up businesses or maybe whack someone off so that they are floating down the Hudson River. I mean, it sounds like just from that, that people should really be flooding to this game. And when it released, it should have just absolutely exploded. But it kind of just did okay. And very rarely seems to ever get brought up on anyone's top tens, top fives, top hundreds, whatever. It just seems to be one of those games that was very quickly forgotten about. It's a pretty solid game. You know, it's it's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. It's probably relatively easy to give it a 7, if not 7.5 out of 10. Yes, some of the artwork lets the game down, but the core gameplay of the area control, the theming of The Godfather, I'm just surprised that it didn't do more. And my number one of games that kind of just vanished after release is Ank. Now this might be a slightly controversial pick because there's definitely some people that love this game but if you look at its predecessors of Blood Rage and Rising Sun I don't think you can argue with the fact that Ank just didn't live up to the billing of the previous two. Blood Rage is definitely still talked about and certainly is still in people's top 10, 20s or whatever. You can not be surprised if you see that on someone's list. It's easy to see Rising Sun on people's top 100 list on like the Dice Tower or whatever. It's easy to be there 
because it's a strong game. Ankh just feels very Euro gamey, despite with the big minis and everything feeling like it should be something else. And I think that's why Ankh has sort of just flopped, to be, ex uh, to be honest. I've enjoyed the plays that I've had of it, but it's probably not going to get to the table over the other two, and I don't think that helps. It's in that trilogy, or maybe more soon, but it's in that trilogy of Blood Rage, Rising Sun and Ankh. And to me, actually, the Egyptian theme is probably the one I'm most attracted to. Yeah, it's the game that's least likely to get to the table. But it was a huge, huge Kickstarter for Simon. And then it's just kind of vanished. But anyway, they are five slash six games that have kind of just disappeared a little bit after they released. Let me know if you really enjoy them. Am I right? Am I wrong? What game would you say just vanished? Even if for you it's a brilliant game. Maybe it's just unavailable. Maybe it's vanished. You know, not like a Battlestar Galactica that is out of print. It's vanished off shelves, but God, you hear a lot about it when you sort of consume board game content. But these other, some, these ones that I've spoken about, they just don't seem to get talked about that much anymore, rightly or wrongly. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the top five list. There's other ones on the channel. Please do go check them out. And until next time, have a great day gaming.